Hello One Piece enthusiasts, I'm the One Piece nerd and today let's talk about Kuma. So, as of chapter 1067, Kuma has been acting weird and there's a lot of questions regarding Kuma to begin with. I know we will be revealed to the answers sooner or later, that goes for everything in One Piece. But let's make a theory, let's see how close I am to the spot. If I'm not, oh well, whatever. And before you do, make sure to like and subscribe, it helps the channel out a lot. And speaking of, thank you guys so much for the 100 subs, I, it's quicker than I expected honestly. And I really appreciate the support and the love and the comments that you give. And yes, look forward to the special video coming in about a week, like next week, because we have no chapter. I think it's the best time to do it, and I hope I can deliver on it. Now that you have, let's begin. So, regarding Kuma, the f things I want to cover in this video is number one, the timeline of events of Kuma, whatever he's been doing from the start of, you know, when he was a revolutionary up until now. And the next thing I want to focus on is whatever happened with him and the world government, what actually made him want to work for the government, and number three, what is actually going on in his head right now. Now, we have to start off with the timeline first in order to get everything in our head. <coughs> Now, I could be wrong. I definitely could be wrong because there could be missing elements that Oda has yet to reveal. But from the evidence thus far, the video is still, I would say, accurate. So let's begin. Kuma, uh, Bonnie, has been sort of saying information about Kuma all over the place over the last three or four chapters in Egghead. From the start of her introduction in Egghead until now, She's been saying a lot of stuff, and one the one thing that can get us off to where I want to begin is where was Kuma before world, the world government, you know, took him in or he was named the Tyrant King. So it's been revealed that the information about Kuma being a Tyrant King is false information because obviously it's false, it's world government propaganda. and. Bonnie obviously being the child of Kuma would definitely know something about it So one thing that is to be said before we talk about the timeline Kuma is a is from a special race a special race that That's probably why the world government has taken an interest in him So him being a special race brings up a little bit of question Big Mom stated when he when she met King at uh, Onigashima is that King was one of the Lunarians was one of the races she was missing from her kingdom. She had three races that she didn't have in her kingdom. One being the Lunarians, number two being the Giants, and number three we have no idea about. Could it be what race Kuma is? That brings up a question. So think about it. I mean, at this point, I don't know how you're going to introduce another race, but you could, you definitely could, but it would be nice to see that it's actually Kuma, and we get a little bit more backstory as to what happened to Kuma's race to begin with. Sort of like what the Lunarians was. So, moving on from this point onward, Bonnie says that he was a part of the revolutionaries, which probably goes to show why Kuma had a connection to Vegapunk, like, you know, Bonnie and Kuma having a connection to Vegapunk. Like, it wouldn't make sense because Dragon and Vegapunk were friends. Friends? Alright, friends would be the right term to say. And obviously, although they were in separate alliances, their goal was the same. And obviously, Dragon and Vegapunk never stopped connecting with each other. So that goes to show that maybe Kuma joined the revolutionaries first. Him being a king of the Sorbet Kingdom, sort of the same way how the, the Revolutionary Army is now making alliances with kingdoms, sort of like King Cobra, I would suspect that Kuma was one of those kings, the first few kings who actually volunteered to work for the revolutionaries and actually liked their purpose. And he figured out something like, you know, whatever is going on with the world government and that's how they ended up together. Now, it's stated that when Kuma was captured, that was when he was named the Tyrant King, and that's when he had to sort of cut his ties with the revolutionaries. Now, this is probably after, you know, Sabo joined the revolutionaries, because we remember 
Kuma and Sabo being friendly and they used to spar and whatever whatnot. And then Ivankov a few years later in Marine Ford, like she was stuck in Impel Dawn for I do not remember how long, but she stated that Kuma, hey Kuma, we are friends, we used to be friends. So Ivankov, in my opinion, is probably stuck in Impel Dawn for a very long time. I would say five years or something. I could be getting the timeline wrong, but it's something like that. So somewhere in between was when Kuma got captured or, you know, let himself be captured from the world government. And that's when he became a slave to them. So at first, Kuma was a king. Second, he was a revolutionary. And that's when we saw him with Dragon saving Sabo and then Sabo training with Kuma. And then we finally got to see whatever happened with Kuma becoming a warlord. Ever since Kuma became a warlord, he was a puppet of the world government. And that's exactly when things started going downhill. Bonnie states that he hated the world government. Kuma, like most other people, hated the world government and he would never voluntarily work for them. Now here is where everything goes to show that when he started working for the world government, that's when Sardis, something started to go wrong in Kuma's life. Not that something never went wrong in his life before, but just saying. And then after becoming a world government slave, becoming a warlord, then having his memory modified, then we finally see him two years later, post time skip, in Marijoa, being a slave to the Tenryu Bito. So this is basically the timeline of what it was. And now I want to talk about what motivated Kuma to join the world government or what made him join the world government. This is something Mr. Morch came up with. I think I addressed it in a couple of videos ago that the only reason Kuma would be forced into working for the world government if you hate something is blackmail. And the only way to blackmail Kuma is to either threaten to destroy his kingdom or to threaten someone precious to him. And as of last chapter, Rob Lucci made a remark about Bonnie that her use is done and it's about time we eliminate her. This just proving the point that Bonnie was maybe used as a captive in order for Kuma to basically work under the world government and without Bonnie having to know anything. Sort of like King Vegeta in DBZ. If you guys don't know, don't bother about it, but you know what I mean. Those people who know, you know. So Bonnie was used as captive and that made Kuma work for the world government with no other choice but to do so. So if this is where his motivations lie, all he did was to save his daughter, I think it's sore, it sort of really, really makes sense. And then again, it could have, her, Bonnie's purpose could have multiple purposes. It could also be about the fact that, you know, her using her fruit, double fruit, Insama is now able to maintain her youth or something. It could also play, or have a part to play, but you know, this is something I feel like that is more relevant to the current arc. With that being said, what is going on with Kuma right now? Dr. Vegapunk said there is something that she needs, he needs to hand Bonnie to about Kuma that could maybe save Kuma's life. Now what went wrong with Kuma to begin with? Number one, he has no memory as to who he was, as to what he is, and what connections he used to have. He is only made to do one thing and serve only one purpose, that is to serve the world government. Because the last, the first time, when Kuma was brought to Dragon, Dragon said, Kuma, tell me what's wrong, and he replied with, Your wish is my command, your majesty. Well, that basically means he was brainwashed into only following the Tenryu's orders, and that's how he is functioning right now. So, you give back whatever Dr. Vegapunk has to Bonnie, Bonnie goes and gives it to Kuma, and everything is starting to fall into place. It, maybe Kuma gets him his memory back. Considering now Dr. Vegapunk knows that the world government does not trust him anymore, he has no use to keep it to himself right now. Everything can just go out of hand. Speaking of going out of hand, where is Kuma running off to? This is what brought the question up in the first place. With the CP0, with an attack, with an order to attack Egghead, it could mean one of two things. One, 
Kuma somehow was programmed when he was maybe a part of CP0, maybe a part of the world government, or it has maybe something to do with the pacifista that is in, that is under the hands of the CP0 agents, like with Rob Lucci. It could either have something to do with it, or has something to do with Bonnie's life being in danger. With CP0 attacking Dr. Vegapunk and Bonnie at the same time, it could do one of two things, and one of which I believe is the protecting Bonnie situation. So, imagine this. This is a scenario that I wish for it to happen in Egghead. I do speculate that Egghead would be a short arc, but it doesn't mean nothing can happen. You know, it doesn't mean that it has to end right now. What I could expect when I said Egghead was going to be the island of conflict, it's entirely possible that the revolutionaries arrive in Egghead. Bonnie is there with whatever Vegapunk needed to give Kuma. Kuma gets whatever he needs in Egghead, and that's where we move on. They somehow deal with CP0, the revolutionaries somehow catch up to Egghead, and something can go on from there. That is all I have to say, all I have to say honestly. If it is a primal protection to save Bonnie, I feel like that would serve more of a multitude purpose. Like that would go that would go to show that no matter how much you bring Mashkuma, he would whatever he loved in his past life is still his first priority over everything else below it. And I think that would make a lot of sense and it would make perfect sense for the revolutionaries to make a move in Egghead Island. Now Granted, nothing can happen, everything can happen, but I'm just putting it out there. If you guys enjoyed the video, make sure to like and subscribe. Have a great day. Peace.